Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. If you would take a moment and please fill out that QR code. Make sure you include everybody that's watching so that we can keep track of that. I know there's been a lot of COVID going around, so if you're at home sick, keeping those germs away, we thank you, but we also pray that you get healing up quickly so that you're back in worship with us. If you're a regular online viewer, hey, welcome back. Glad to have you. And again, make sure if there's anything that we can do to help you out, that you let us know about that some way. If you are a first time guest watching us online for the very first time, we are super glad that you have joined us. And we sure hope that our service reminds you of God's great love for us in Christ Jesus, for sure. Well, let's get going with our opening song. make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read sections of Psalm 34 responsibly. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil 
and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for He indeed has had mercy on us and has sent His Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Epistle reading for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost is from Ephesians chapter 4. 
I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying, he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when every part is working properly, makes the body grow so that, that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to walk as a child of the Lord. To you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So the title of the sermon today, Are You Working Properly? 
Always a good question, right? Are you working properly? We have a collection of things not working properly at our house. <laughs> one light turns on, but you can't like do the other one. You have to make sure that one stays. It's not really a true two-way anymore. Um, some of the uh, doors are missing their, their knobs and uh, some of our vehicles, windows don't go up and down. Oh, well, we got all kinds of things that are <laughs> not really working properly. However, most things are working properly. Like, thank the Lord, the air conditioning is working properly. <laughs> Thanks to some of our uh, helpers, for sure. Um, but not to mention just that, uh, there's all kinds of things that, like, the big things in life, right? That if we're not operating properly, well, we have to kind of get after those things to make sure uh, that we are functioning properly. Because if you, well, if you frankly don't have a lot of that stuff uh, functioning in the right way or properly, well, that's when, of course, the wheels come off. And this likely is the case for everything in your lives, too. Probably not everything is working exactly the way it's supposed to be working and you get by, but for the most part, the main things got to be the main things, and you got to make sure that those things are are working. And St. Paul knows all about that too, doesn't he? Uh, the major things, our right relationship with our Heavenly Father. Jesus took care of that for us for sure. And of course, these first three chapters as we've been working through Ephesians, St. Paul wants us to know that that is solid as a rock, right? That Jesus is our rock, that he is died on the cross for our sins, that we are in a right relationship with our Heavenly Father. There isn't anything that can separate us from His great love in Christ Jesus, no matter if we failed yesterday or the day before or last year or whatever it is, completely forgiven, washed away, and we in that one baptism have been made right with God once again. And Christ, that's His promise. That's our foundation that we have to live on. Now, the next three chapters are going to be all about living. So, how well are you responding to this gospel that Jesus has given out? That is, in our life lived in Christ. So, St. Paul, again, begins with encouraging words, even in this regard. When he writes, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So what exactly does a manner worthy of the calling mean? What does that exactly mean? Think about that for a second. My guess, though, is that we have a wholehearted understanding of what this truly means. So today, I mean, if there's any kids listening, and I'm going to do this in the sanctuary, but I'll say, kids, how many of you love to clean your rooms? I'm going to guess maybe one or two hands will go up, but the majority of them are going to be like, nah, 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 nah. I'm, 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 not, uh, I'm not about that. And then I'll ask this, how many of you know that you should clean your rooms when your parents ask you to clean them. Now, I'm sure at that point, a little more hands are going to go up, right? Because, well, that is a manner worthy of the calling that they have been called to, right? God placed them in the home as children. <laughs> and so obedience to the parents, fourth commandment for sure. So there's uh, definitely some pull going on there. There's definitely some things that are working in there. And plus, not to mention if they don't do it, well, there's going to be consequences to that behavior. So they understand this, right? They see what is truly what it means to be a man or worthy of the calling that they've been called to. Another good example, I use this uh, Zoe score, it's called in our premarital counseling. And uh, one of the discussion points I think that I find funny, I, I mean, I just think that this is kind of uh, hilarious that um, that it comes up most frequently or almost all the time. So let's just pretend Dick and Jane are getting married, right? So here would be the uh, places where there's disagreement, you know, it pops up or something along the lines of this. And it says this, Dick doesn't like it when Jane tells him what to do. And then on Jane's side, I'll say, Jane doesn't like it when Dick tells him what to do. 
Imagine that. And this is exactly what I say to the couples when it comes up, right? Someone doesn't want to be told what to do. <laughs> but being told what to do only becomes an issue in marriage when? Well, when someone is not doing the things in a manner that is worthy of the calling. <laughs> I bet some people are kind of squirming around even at home right now when we're talking about this. Um, and I have managed to escalate uh, the tension in several rooms, <laughs> those that are watching, and it'll be a little awkward here maybe in the sanctuary too when I bring this up. But however, I will contend that this is the manner that is worthy of my calling. <laughs> that is, we all need to be better at following God's will for our lives, especially in the family. And that's what St. Paul is going to do in these chapters. And that's what I'm called to do is, well, as God's voice to you. So, and this is important, right? It's important, especially in the family, because after all, marriage and then the family, these are the first two institutions that the Lord created. And he cares greatly that marriage and family function in a manner that is worthy of its calling. More of this to come in chapter 5 and 6, so hopefully you'll come back for more of this, uh, unless you've already turned this off and have moved on to something different, which might be the case too. But nevertheless, let's just continue. So for now, though, we begin building upon this beautiful foundation that St. Paul has laid for us in these first three chapters, right? We, we are going to build on Christ in the manner that is worthy of the calling to which you and I have been called to. And what is that? Well, St. Paul doesn't waste any time in reminding us exactly what that calling is. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. See, we are all one in Christ, but not the same. Our oneness is important because we have the same leader, Jesus. He is our leader. Jesus is our hope. He's our only hope. Jesus is what we believe in. He's our faith. This is the one faith that points us to our God. And the one God, that is the one true God that we worship through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there's a couple more ones too, aren't there? Today, we have a baptism. Aaron Abel will be baptized. And in his baptism, Jesus makes him one with us. One baptism. Aaron becomes part of the family of God. The one faith family. So while he will remain with his parents, Michaela and Ben, sure, although his grandparents, Jim and Kelly, will be happy to take him off their hands, uh, as, long, as, as well as a Ben's, I'm sure, too. Um, but Aaron is one with us, and in that regard that he is one with us in this church, we are responsible for him. And he's just representative that I'm using as an example, representative of all of us, each and every single one of us, as we gather together as the Lord's church. And for this purpose, the Lord gives each of us gifts for the building up of his church, for that encouragement, for, for the diversity of gifts that it takes to, to build that church family, to have it be healthy the way that God designed it. St. Paul uses words like this, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Think about that. We are being built up for the building up of the body of Christ. Our different gifts still have one goal, that is the building up of the Lord's church, which means each and every one of us building each other up. This is what St. Paul is urging us to do as a manner worthy of the calling to which we have been called to. So we all have a part to play, and that part is an important part to play. And it's great to see it take place here on this rally day, because 
Today on Rally Day, we're bringing two families together, right? Our church family and our small saints families together. We are going to be uh, celebrating the beginning of the new education year for our kiddos and also installing our teachers, uh, both for Sunday school and for our small saints program. Uh, we're going to do a backpack blessing um, where we're going to put God's blessings upon all of our kiddos uh, from you know, littles to all the way up to college age kids or even doctorate kids if they wanna, if they're working on their doctorate, we'll bless that too. And then we're just gonna ask a blessing upon all of our teachers too, because this is a big day. We want this to be a big day for us as one community, encouraging one another in this great thing that we have going here, right? As God's one church. So on this rally day, I just wanted to point out one of the things that we're doing slightly different that's connected to what St. Paul is talking about in this text in Ephesians chapter 4. This year in our Growing Faithful Families ministry, we have added a covenant agreement, which is going to begin this way. Moses encourages parents. In Deuteronomy 6 verse 7, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. And Solomon reminds us in Proverbs 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And our founder, Martin Luther, began his small catechism with these words, right? As the head of the family should teach them in a simple way, to his household. And one of our pillars, our Team Jesus Pillar, family pillar, says this, Christ's followers embrace God's design of the family household being the center of faith formation. And to close it, we, the staff and elders, joyfully encourage you to be fully engaged in our growing faithful family ministry where we partner with you in following the Lord's plan for faith formation of our children. Why do we do this? Well, we do this because this is the manner worthy of our calling. This one calling that we have in Christ Jesus. Because after all, nothing else matters except that one faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because He is our hope. And we know that He is the way and the truth and the life. And everything must be centered on Christ and Christ alone. Remember, even Jesus' final command that he gave before he went back to heaven, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded. That's our job as his church, to make sure that we are all, growing and walking in a manner that is worthy of our Lord. And why is that? St. Paul closes this off, telling us exactly why this is important. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Remember, the world out there is, is not going to help us in our walk with our Lord. It's here within the church where we are encouraged by one another, where we are held accountable to one another. It is here where we learn to grow together. And may the Lord continue to bless his efforts among us here to accomplish those things that he would have us do here. Amen. And may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts he has blessed us with and entrusted to us for his kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this. 
Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The Liberty Women's Clinic Golf Tournament is just around the corner on Saturday, August 24th at the Excelsior Springs Golf Course. Registration is still open for both the morning and afternoon sessions. Scan the QR link now to register your team. We are looking for volunteers for the day of the event to help everything run smoothly. We're also seeking donations of silent auction items and day of consumables that help offset the cost of the tournament. Anything we don't have to buy is money that is directly donated to the Liberty Women's Clinic. Scan the QR code now or find the link in the Team Jesus News to see how you can help. We also ask for your prayers for great weather and a great tournament. We can't wait to see you out on the green. This Sunday, after our second service, around 1145, we will have our back-to-school celebration. Join us for food, fun, fellowship, and a bounce house. We can't wait to see you there. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
This morning in our prayers, we want to remember Phyllis Watson, who is battling some health issues. She's been in and out of the hospital, so prayers for her healing. Prayers for Heidi Larson as she uh, broke a bone on the mission trip. So prayers for her quick healing. Prayers for Teresa. This is Lisa Starkeybaum's cousin with chemo side effects. Uh, fortunately, the, her cancer is under control, so uh, just prayers for her handling that chemo. Prayers for Marty. Uh, this is the husband of Kathy Chelton's cousin, Cindy. Um, unfortunately, is needing to be placed in a care center, but just uh, continue prayers for him with his health issues. Prayers for Amy. This is a friend of Brad and Lori Stengel that's recovering from a stroke. Prayers for Troy Johnston and his uh, battle with his cancer and heart condition. Also, Rick Strack with his infections and healing from surgery. And also, James Moore with his uh, uh, lung cancer. Also, prayers of thanksgiving for our Rally Day celebration. And again, with all the schools that are starting. And just once again, prayers for uh, the Bill Putnam family as they mourn his death. This funeral was this past Sunday. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day where we celebrate Rally Day, where we're bringing together our small saints family along with our Team Jesus families as we begin and kick off this education year for our Team Jesus Church. We ask that you would pour all your blessings upon all of our teachers and students and families and everybody that's participating with our rally day and with our church family. We ask that you would continue to keep us close to that great commission command of baptizing and teaching our little ones to observe all things that you have commanded. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for this gift of education and ask that you would bless it this year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray that you would be with all that are beginning a new school year, especially here in our Liberty community. Give wisdom to the administrators to make decisions that are God-pleasing and in accordance with your will for healthy societal foundations. Also bless all of our teachers with wisdom to teach. Bless all the students with a willingness to learn and have our schools be places where students and teachers are free from all harm and evil this year. We also get, ask you put your blessings upon our uh, Lutheran High School of Kansas City, all the families that are connected there and the teachers and staff, and also with Martin Luther Academy as they begin another school year too. We ask that you would just continue to bless uh, the administrators and teachers and families that are connected there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting Father, look with mercy on those that need you right now, especially those that we named and those that we name in our hearts. Sustain and comfort those who mourn the death of loved ones, especially the Putnam family and all those that have lost loved ones. Comfort them that they may find hope in the resurrection of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you called us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Nash, Carter, Heather, George, Steve, April, Lisa, Lynette, and Aaron as he is baptized this day. Lord, keep us always in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, who instituted, ordered, and blessed the estate of marriage between a man and a woman, we give you thanks for this most precious gift. We ask that you would be with those that are celebrating anniversaries, including Al and Brenda, Chuck and Pam, Mike and Vicki, Troy and Julie, Bill and Rochelle, and Ty and Clear. Continue to be their source of strength and the strength of all of our marriages so that we bring honor and glory to your name. And Lord, we ask that you'd be the companion of those that live alone, reminding them that you are indeed using them for your good purposes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the
and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Sorrows, tears away.